Welcome to the fourth training movie in the Coral Finder Toolkit training movie series. In the previous movie, we met the coral animal and its skeleton, and we're introduced to the simplified set of terms used by the Coral Finder to separate coral genera. If you skip that bit, you will have to go back eventually. In this movie, we will be introduced to the Coral Finder itself and the principles of how to use it. The first thing to do is to grab your Coral Finder and hold it in your hot little hand. It may look like an unusual plastic book, but I prefer to think of it as a visual decision tool, something you use to solve a problem. In this case, the problem is, what coral is that? Unlike books, which are read, decision tools are interrogated using information from the real world. In this case, something you can see about the coral in front of you while you are underwater. I call the principle WYSIWILP. What you see is what you look for. As a visual decision tool, the Coral Finder has some characteristics that are advantageous when compared to the traditional dichotomous key used by scientists. This overcomes the problem of assumed knowledge and the great big Latin words that get in the road of learning for the beginner. Instead, the Coral Finder relies on visual recognition, which means anyone with a good eye for detail can make quick progress with minimal training. And did I mention you can take it underwater? Finally, you can take the learning process to the coral instead of keeping it in your head for after the dive. Okay, now that we know the basic anatomy of a coral, we need to know the anatomy of the coral finder itself. The front page is known as the key page. It classifies the world of hard corals by shape, form, texture, and life habit. The key page contains key groups, all of which are simple visual concepts. For example, corals that are branching, or corals that have meandering valleys on their surface. Other key groups are based on the way the coral lives. For example, whether it is attached to the bottom or not, or whether it has large polyps expanded during the day. The point is that the key uses simple visuals and keeps text to a minimum. When text is used, it is limited to plain language and the few key terms in blue that you learned from the earlier diagram. The Coral Finder uses a three-step process. Choose a key group. Then choose a lookalike page. Go to that lookalike page, compare and confirm characters, and check the scale. Once you have chosen the key group, you then need to choose a lookalike page. You can do this by consulting the plain language prompts, which may ask you to judge the scale or some visual features of the coral. This gives you the lookalike page number to check out. Use the page tabs to select the page, and there before you will be a grid of images with five or six of the best bets of what this coral could be. There's one more thing about lookalike pages that I want to emphasize. Note the true scale square. In a system driven by images, it is very important, I say again, very important, to make sure you have the scale right. So here's Russell's rule number two. If you don't check the true scale of your coral identification, you will make mistakes. Now it's time to explain how the Coral Finder key groups work and we'll use the branching key group as a worked example. So grab your Coral Finder and look at the first key group at the top of the front page. In the coral world, branching corals can take on many forms and almost any conceivable texture. The Coral Finder's definition of branching is fairly broad and includes branching in all its forms. From needles, through fingers, to clubs and blades. Likewise, the scale of what is considered to be branching can also vary from centimetres to over a metre. There is no rule book 
for the shapes possible in the coral universe. So it is important to keep an open mind. For example, branching corals that are blade or club-like may also form columns. So keep the columns key group in the back of your mind when identifying branching corals and vice versa. An important thing to understand about corals is their capacity to mould shape. The genus Acropora is a common branching coral with over 130 species. Over evolutionary time, this genus has explored every conceivable variation on the theme of branching, including using tiny branches to make shapes like tables and plates. Once you grasp the branchlets idea, then the first coral finder key group is very easy to use. Here's my beautiful wife, Rachel, doing a spot of coral bothering. That's a brand new coral finder in her hot little hand. She's excited. Step one, not surprisingly, is to have a good look at the coral you want to identify with a view to putting it into one of the coral finder key groups. Well, duh, I guess on this occasion, there's no need to go past branching, is there? For this, we will need to use a term from the visual glossary. Note that there is a diagram that refers specifically to branching corals. To move forward with our coral ID, we need to know if it has axial corallites. A corallite is the part of the skeleton where the coral polyp animal actually lives. An axial corallite looks different from all the other corallites and is found at the tips of the branches. They're easy to recognize. Check the branching coral next to us. It has an axial corallite. Now back to our target coral. Clearly it doesn't. Problem solved. That was an example of how to use one of the 10 or so basic terms needed to use the coral finder to its full extent. Once you learn the terms in blue and you begin to feel the force, then nothing will stop you. Okay, so now we're on our way. Let's follow through on the key page. So, there is no axial corallite. To select a lookalike page, we now need to answer one of the following questions. Are the corallites less or greater than two millimeters? Let's look. They're pretty small. So let's go with less than two millimeters, which suggests pages two and three. Rachel uses the tabs to open at pages two and three. And after a quick visual scan, decides that page two holds some promising candidates. From testing, we know that people usually see the best option almost instantly, such as the power of our iBrain supercomputer. But the Coral Finder also lets you confirm your choice with a brief character description and tip arrows. Confirming these characters is the best way to learn. The text in bold refers to important distinguishing characters, and the superscript numbers refer to the yellow tip arrows where some of these features are highlighted. Note the bold text. Branches have blunt, slightly flattened ends. Check. Coralite small and may have hoods. Check. The identification of the coral you seek to name has three steps. One, close comparison with the images in the coral finder. Two, cross-checking of the key features. And three, confirmation of true scale. Throughout the coral finder, true scale is indicated by the images in the boxes next to the text description. Now, with your scale confirmed, read off the name on the left-hand side of the page. This is the name of the coral genus. Next to the name, you will see a cross-reference to the relevant volume and page number in Corals of the World. If you want to learn more about this coral, use the slate on the back of the Coral Finder to note the coral's name, Corals of the World reference data, and the Coral Finder page number. After the dive, there are a couple of ways you will be able to learn more. Firstly, 
go to www.coralhub.info and under the Coral Finder menu, you will see the A to Z submenu. This is an index of all coral genera captured by the Coral Finder. Each link leads to a genus landing page containing a summary of everything you will need to know about identifying that genus, including video tutorials, tips and tricks, and the latest news from the coral world. Additionally, if you have access to Corals of the World, Charlie Veron's epic three-volume treatise, then use the cross-reference code to explore the species contained within that genus. So that ends our introduction to the Coral Finder and how to use it. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. There is a lot more to the Coral Finder than shown here, which we will save for future videos. But for now, the take-home message is that high-quality genus-level Coral ID is possible. For more information, including more video instruction, please go to www.coralhub.info. Thanks for watching.